Hey guys, Myas is here again, and we're looking at sketching polar graphs this time. Now, some of these problems I have in bold, we're going to do in a calculator. I actually don't have my calculator on this computer that I'm working on, so I'm going to make another video with just those and show you how to graph those in a, on a calculator. Uh, so here we go. With polar coordinates and graphs, you're going to be using R and theta. And what I recommend is that you kind of you use theta as your obviously is your depend your independent variable and your r is going to be your um your dependent variable and you're going to make a table of values r and theta excuse me and you're going to use theta values that are easy to use on the unit circle more importantly i think you're going to want to use the the ones that are on the edge so zero pi over two um, pi three pi over two and 2 pi are the most common ones on the edges and what that allows us to do is allows us to get uh, ones or negative ones which are easy to graph on them so if i did zero here and i plugged in zero for sine i get zero pi over two for sine i get one which is give me five pi for sine is going to give me zero three pi over two is going to give me negative five and then i'm going to give zero i'm going to go in and graph these now when you graph them you're going to graph these points in a counterclockwise manner so I'm gonna start at 0 0 and I'm gonna go counterclockwise counterclockwise in a circular motion to my next point my next point is 5 pi over 2 so 1 2 3 4 5 this is 5 pi over 2 and I'm gonna go I'm going to go in a oops in a counterclockwise motion like that okay so a circular counterclockwise motion and I'm gonna to go to pi 0 which is basically back here and then I'd actually keep going. So this right here, this is a circle. All right, and we'd see that also if we did that on our on our uh, calculator. We've got another type of graph called a rose petal curve. And with rose petals, what you're going to do for your theta, you've got to think a little bit on what your values of theta are going to be. And for roses, I've got a longer, much longer video that I really go in depth on how to really how to graph these rose petal these rose petal curves on uh, my YouTube channel. So if you want to go look that up, um, you can go look that up on, on my YouTube channel. But for kind of a, a quick basis here, um, you're going to look at the number inside here. If the number is even, it's going to give you twice that many petals. If it's odd, it's going to give you exactly that many petals. So in this case, I know this is going to be a four petaled rose. So a four petaled rose, and I'll go ahead and graph this in a calculator because it's bold. But you'll see when I graph it in a calculator in my next video that it'll come out four petals. Now I got three petals in my ne next one here. So what I'm going to do is uh, use these ones, 0 pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. This is what I found that works best. You take each of those and you divide by 3. And that gives you the values that you're going to want to use. So you're going to have pi over 6 because pi over 2 divided by 3 is pi over 6. And then pi divided by 3 is pi over 3. And so forth. So you're going to continue to use those values until you've completed three revolutions or three petals. Now when you plug in zero here, you're going to get zero, and that's going to give you zero. This is going to give you four, because it's going to give you a one when you plug that in. And you're going to plug this in here, and that's going to give you zero. It's going to give you a negative four, zero, and then one more will take you back to the four. All right, and then we want to we started at zero, so we're going to want to end at zero. So we're going to go one more than that, and that's going to be a pi. So zero zero is here, and we're going to go in a counterclockwise motion. <coughs> that was probably really loud on screen. Okay, that's pi over six and four. Then zero and pi over three is going to go back. Anytime we got a radius of zero, it goes back to the origin. Pi over 2 is up here, so we're going to go backwards. 1, 2, 3, 4. Then we're going to go back. <clears throat> 5 pi over 6. Right there. And then we're going to go back. And that completes our three petal rows. All right? Okay. <clears throat> Another one we have is called a Limousin. It's French, Limousin. So I'll go ahead and graph that in a calculator uh, in my next video. But I'm going to show you how to graph this by hand. 
So when you're graphing limosons by hand, you'll know it's a limoson because it has a number plus something with a sine and cosine. And your r and theta values are just going to be your basic values, um, 0, pi over 2, pi, and 3 pi over 2, and so forth. So we're going to use 0, uh, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2. We're just going to plug it into our formula here. So we're going to go and plug in 0 into there, and uh, 0 is going to give you 0, which is going to give you 3. And then this is going to give you 6, and this is just, I'm just plugging it in, right? Uh, pi in there, it's going to give you negative 1, which is, <clears throat> sorry, it's going to give you 0 here, which is going to give you 3 back. And 3 pi over 2 is going to give you a negative 1, which is going to give you 0. Let's go and graph those then. Um, 0 with a radius of 3. It's right here. Pi over 2 with a radius of 6. It's up there. And again, I'm going to go counterclockwise like that. Pi with a radius of 3. Counterclockwise like that. 3 pi over 2 with a radius of 0. Anything with a radius of 0 goes back to the origin. And if I went one more, which would be 2 pi, I would end up back at 3. It kind of looks like a heart. All right. So we've got, we also got limassons that have like a little circle inside. And I think you, you're going to see that when we do this one. And we know that because of the values of um, the values that are right next to the function. All right, and in my last one, I'm going to talk about a lemnus gate. And a lemnus gate looks like an infinity symbol, but I'll, again, I'll do that on the calculator. All right, so there you go. You've got three types of polar coordinates, uh, polar graphs that you'll, be, you'll need to be able to do. A circle, a rose petal, and a limousin. All right, we'll see you later. Bye.